Good day everyone and welcome to another beautiful video. In this video, I'm going to share my experience of visiting a nature reserve called as Shire Water Islands Marine Park in Rockingham in Western Australia. This marine park has some beautiful islands and Penguin Island is one of them where there are different kind of penguins and different variety of birds inhabit. We went on a ferry to the Penguin Island, landed there, watched feeding of penguins, then I went on a tour around the island. There are also different kind of activities we can do in this park and most of them are going to be in this video. If you guys are keen to watch more content like this, consider subscribing to our channel and hit the bell icon and without further delay, let's start our journey. I reached the Penguin Island Visitor Center in the morning, done my check-in and waited for the ferry from mainland to the Penguin Island. It was not so far away from the mainland as we can see that from the show. After some time, our ferry came, picked a bus and we were on our way to the beautiful Penguin Island. Roughly after 10 minutes of travel, we landed in the Penguin Island and walked inside. On my way in, I found a lot of birds in the shore and flying around the Penguin Island. Also, there were a lot of people came there to spend their holidays. After walking few minutes into the island through the concrete pathway, I found a place called Penguin Discovery Center. This is where the penguins were kept and we were waiting for the penguin feeding show which was about to start by few minutes. While waiting for the penguins, I noticed that at the entrance of the discovery center, there were some sea creatures, skeleton of the sea animals and birds, some beautiful shells and corals were exhibited. They all looked beautiful and I could be able to see what kind of marine life, birds and animals are in that island and in the surroundings. After some time, we went inside the penguin center. It was designed naturally and beautifully with a pool in the middle and some rocks and shrubs around it. There were some penguins swimming and playing in the pool and some were outside. I also noticed that there were some shelters for the penguins just outside the pool. Few minutes later, our guide Mel came and she started explaining about the penguins. You guys can also watch what did she demonstrate and how she fed the penguins. Let's introduce you to our seven resident penguins. Just a couple of reminders just before we get started. If you are using your cameras or your phones, just make sure that the flash is turned off, please. These penguins have really sensitive eyes and the flash can actually damage their eyesight. Uh, secondly, 
you'll be lovely and quiet, thank you. <laughs> if we keep the noise to a minimum, that would be great for the penguins. Although they are used to people, loud noises can startle and scare them a little bit. Okay, can anybody tell me what species of penguins these are? What type of penguins they are? Absolutely, who said that? Well done. <laughs> They are, they are little penguins and a really, really good name for them. They're also known as blue penguins or fairy penguins, but the preferred common name is little penguins. Now I know everybody's only just arrived on the island, but has anybody seen a wild penguin today? Oh, a couple of you. Okay, we might find out where you spotted those a little bit later. Um, that's very lucky if you've seen them. Little penguins actually, the wild ones, actually spend 80% of their lives out at sea. So they go out first thing in the morning before sunrise and then they'll come back after sunset. And they can actually spend days or even weeks out at sea. And the only reason they come up onto Penguin Island is if they're molting, or if they're breeding, or for the occasional rest. And I'll tell you about the molting and the breeding in a minute. Do you think we've got some hungry penguins here? Possibly. Now this is their vitamin, so I'll just, just wait. Just wait. I'll just make sure you have one. Just bear with me. Two, three, and I'll give you one in a second, Jerry. So Minor, 
Uh, it's a scientific name for little penguins, which means good little diver. And they are very good divers. They've actually been recorded to dive down to over 60 metres. But they normally forage for their food between about 5 and 10 metres. For such small bodies, they can hold their breath underwater for 5 minutes. And they can swim out at sea, the wild penguins, up to 12 kilometres an hour. So really quite speedy when they're out at sea. Now, if we look at Pocket in the water, she basically flies through the water. She's got a very streamlined body. And she hasn't got wings. She's actually got flippers. And then her, le her back legs are placed well back on her body, so it's like they're less water resistant. Especially when you think they can spend 80% of their lives out at sea. You will see them up on the rocks. They take really good care of their feathers. They do a lot of preening and looking after them. And even just above the base of their tail, they actually have an oil gland, and that secretes an oil which they preen over their feathers. But something very special every year happens to them. They go through what's called a catastrophic molt. All birds molt, but they mostly throughout the year they lose a few feathers. These guys lose all of their feathers in about two or three weeks. They go out, they gorge themselves, they come up onto the land, uh, and they go somewhere where they feel safe, under the boardwalk, in the vegetation. So if you guys spotted a penguin today, it would have been well hidden. Um, they have to stay on the island for two or three weeks whilst they go through this very horrible process. It uses a lot of energy, it's itchy, it's uncomfortable, it's the hottest time of the year and it's very stressful for their bodies and for them. Our penguin numbers have dropped dramatically over the years. When I first started, Okay, I'll get it. When I first started about nine years ago, I used to say there were about 1,200 penguins on the island. We are now down to less than 200 penguins. Not many left. That's a huge drop. So even you guys today, season, for such little penguins, they are very vocal. You'll hear lots of barking sounds, brain noises coming from the vegetation around that time. They're trying to attract a partner or see off a would-be rival. Once they've paired up, they come up onto their island to their natural burrows under the vegetation. But also, you may see some cream-coloured boxes with um, like shake off over, and they use those to nest in as well. They will have two eggs, about the size of chicken eggs. Um, they'll incubate them for five weeks. Once they hatch, they have two little chicks, really tiny, 30, 40 grams. There's actually some pictures on this board here. You can have a look after. Um, both of the parents are very good at parenting duty. They both help out and feed them. Go up this way, up on the hill, you'll see the pelicans, and they've got chicks there. As you walk round on the back beach, we've got crested terns. Some of them are down on the beach, so just make sure you don't walk right through the middle of them, just go round them. Um, there's no snakes on the island, but you may have spotted already the king's skinks. So, skinks about this big, yep. Yeah. They are mostly down at the picnic area, and they are looking for your picnic or your snack. Please do not feed them or any of the birds, there is plenty for them there. But they will try. I know yesterday somebody was eating strawberries and she had about five stinks around her. So, but don't feed them. After finishing the penguin feeding session, I came out and decided to go for a walk around the penguin island. At the front of the penguin island is a small shady picnic area close to the beach with some tables and benches where you can chill out. In that park, I saw some big lizard type of reptiles which are called as king's kings. These are non-venomous animals and there were a lot of them in the island. Normally, they are very timid creature but they were roaming around there just to get some food from the tourist. The 
Penguin Island Beach looked very nice and clean. There were some people doing kayaking, kids were playing with the sand, and it's a really perfect place for your weekend or holiday getaway. There were a lot of birds in the penguin island. There was a wooden platform on which we can walk around the island and I started walking on it. While walking, I noticed different kind of birds flying around and many birds were hiding in the bush and making different noises. Even the walkway was full of bird shit. Next, I went down to the beach and looked at some historical cave structures in the Penguin Island. There was a notice board near the shore and it was mentioned that a New Zealander, Seaford Mackenzie, was the first person to reside in Penguin Island in 1914. He declared himself as the king of the island and detonated explosives to create limestone caves. In 1918, he was granted an annual lease of Penguin Island. Along the beach, I saw few caves which were created by Mackenzie. They were ruined a lot and access to enter into the caves were denied, but they looked more natural and beautiful though. Then I climbed again through the stairs and started walking around the island on the wooden platform. Some areas of this island were declared as the nesting areas for some sensitive birds and our access was denied. After some time, I reached the top of the island and from there, the view of the surrounding sea was spectacular. There were a lot of rocks around the island and I saw a lot of different kind of birds. In this video, whatever you see in white color is a bird, guys and at the far I could be able to see the Australian mainland as well. There were a lot of rocks at the backside of the Penguin Island. Most of them were undergone weathering and they were in different shapes and textures. There were also some birds hiding in there.
After walking along the beach for some time, I then started climbing up another wooden staircase to go to the other part of the island. There were some notice boards on our way displaying different facts about the penguin island and different kind of birds in the island. Little penguins, king's king and buff banded rail are some common creature which we can find in the sand dunes of penguin island. Pied cormorants, sooty oyster catcher, pied oyster catcher, crested tern, brittle tern and fairy tern are some of the most common birds which we can find in penguin island. On the last notice board, a photo of beautiful aerial view of the island was shown. The wooden platform and staircases were installed all around the penguin island to walk around and visit most of the places very easily. But also some places were denied access as they were nesting site of some birds and in some part of the wooden platform there were broken planks too. There was also another kind of bird called as Australian pelican in Penguin Island. They were living on top of the island. After climbing up to another higher spot, the view of the island was amazing. Wherever you see, you can find birds. This island was full of birds guys, but the crazy thing was I couldn't find any penguins in the island. It was a great experience to visit the penguin island, watch the penguin feeding, walked around the island and watched many varieties of birds and beauty of the nature. I hope you guys would have enjoyed this video and if you did so, leave a thumbs up on this video, subscribe to our channel to watch more content like this and I will see you all in another beautiful video. Till then, thanks for watching and cheers.